In April of 1945, Berlin awaits in unbearable tension as the Soviet forces approach. In a matter of days, the entire city would be rained upon with artillery. Buildings are leveled, the Reichstag is captured, and thousands of female civilians are victims of atrocity. From mid-April to early May, Allied forces of the Soviet Union made the last push of World War II to bring the war to Hitler and capture Berlin. Come with us as we look at how the war in Europe came to an end. For a conflict that had spanned continents and lasted nearly seven years, it would be ended in a spell of two weeks and two days. Yet bringing the Third Reich to surrender came with incredible costs with unimaginable artillery ordinances, millions of soldiers in bloody battles, thousands of tanks destroyed, and many innocent civilians left traumatized for life. Nietzsche would write, Beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. Prepare for the ghastly truths of the Russian military going too far in the fall of Berlin. A series of entrenched, hard-fought battles right in the heart of the Third Reich would end World War II. The Soviet Red Army would make the last of major offenses in the Atlantic Theater and make Berlin their conquest in early 1945. Following the rising of the Russian flag on the Reichstag, the Nazi regime had fallen and the city was under the capture of the Soviet forces. Prior to the Soviets reaching Berlin, some of the most costly fighting of the war would take place on the outskirts of the city at the Battle of oder -Neisse. From April 16th, the Soviets would launch one of the final pitched battles of the entire conflict as nearly a million Red Army soldiers would attempt to break through the last line of defense to Berlin. At the cost of 42,000 soldiers between the German and Soviet forces, the Battle of Siedlo Heights concluded just four days later on April 19th. The amount of artillery, mortar, rockets, and aircraft used in this battle alone is barely fathomable. Just to get Berlin encircled by April 20th had cost the Soviets nearly 3,000 tanks. April 20th marked a day entirely conducted in symbolism. On one hand, it was Hitler's 56th birthday. On the other hand, the Soviets began shelling the city of Berlin with a ferocity never seen before. The total artillery used by the Soviets during the shelling was more than the Allies had used across the entire conflict. A brutal and clear message to the last bastion of the Third Reich. Surrender the city or artillery will rain from the sky. Over 2 million Russian and some 70,000 plus Polish soldiers advanced on Berlin from the east, the south, northeast, and circling to the west. Hitler had ordered divisions who made some success in attacking advancing Red Army forces from the north to move and began attacking the west. Within just a day, it was clear that any such counterattacks were futile, and it was a matter of time before the Russians reached Berlin's center. On the 22nd of April, Hitler's situation conference on that afternoon was the moment the bubble burst for him. He realized there would be no countering the two million strong Red onslaught, and that the war was lost. His exact words were, everything is lost and many would retrospectively declare that the tirade now made famous in media depiction was the material of a nervous breakdown. In what's been outlined as a tear-drenched rage, Hitler blamed his generals for the decline in Nazi fortune, declared he'd stay in Berlin till the very end, then take his own life. In truth, either Hitler's nihilism or his decaying mental health had been winning the battle for real estate in his crazy head for some time. The tide had turned considerably for Germany some six months prior in late 1944. Western allies and the Red Army were making considerable advances into Germany and leaving ruins in their wake. Following the failure of the Ardennes offense, he viewed German military failure as a loss of the right to stand as a nation. His response? Order all German industry to be destroyed before the allies arrived. Hitler was long, ill, drug-riddled and, no doubt, out of contact with reality. His last broadcast on German radio speaking of unalterable will was to a country in ruins after losing a war. Staggeringly, from April 23rd, with Berlin entirely surrounded by Soviet forces and supply lines cut off, Hitler saw no capacity for backing down despite being confined to a bunker. Both Goering and Himmler were arrested under Hitler's orders days later for simply trying to run an administration he'd hidden a bunker from. Come the 29th of April, with Hitler and Eva Braun stowed away in their bunker, the city of Berlin was breached and it became a battle for the Reichstag. Soviets would attempt to flood the city through the Third Shock Army. Despite crossing the Moltke Bridge, their initial attempts at sieging buildings were far from successful due to a lack of immediate artillery support. Ironically, so much Soviet artillery had damaged bridges crossing into the center of Berlin. It would take bridge repairs before the final stage of battle could begin in earnest. In the early hours of the morning, Hitler and Eva Braun would marry, following Hitler's signing of his last will and testament. Come the following day on the dawn of April 30th, 
The bridges had been repaired by the Soviets, the artillery backup had arrived, and the last battle of the European theater was on. As Soviet forces flooded the city, they were met with entrenched German defenders on their city in fierce combat. Entrenchment included civilians, including women and children involved in building anti-tank trenches and securing Flak 40 guns on roofs. What followed was an unraveling constant of intense urban combat. The fighting unfolded street for street, house for house, and come the Reichstag itself, room for room. Across 24 hours, the Soviets were held at bay for as long as possible with Germans using their knowledge of the city's terrain to their advantage, but were overwhelmed by the Soviets' numbers and firepowers. Yet the war was over. That afternoon of April 30th, Hitler and Braun took their own lives in the Führer bunker. Hitler put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger. Braun bit down on a cyanide capsule. That very same day after numerous German soldier entrenchments were defeated, the Soviets captured the Reichstag. For six long years, the world had been at war, and as two Red Army soldiers raised the Soviet flag atop the Reichstag, and with Hitler's death confirmed, it appeared to finally, mercifully, be over. The image of the hammer and sickle above the Reichstag would become one of the most famed images of the entire conflict. Interestingly, this immortal image was, like many flag-raising photos across the war, a reenactment for the press. May 2, 1945 would be the date when combat in Europe would be declared officially over. After a long month of severe shelling and ceaseless combat, Berlin was a shell of itself, with its infrastructure profoundly damaged. The Soviets across the last days of April and into May had captured all the significant locations of the capital, Anhalter Bahnhof, Tempelhof Airport, the Gestapo headquarters, and the Ministry of the Interior had all fallen to Soviet siege. A staggering amount of looting would befall the city as the Soviet forces roamed. General Wielding, the man given the unenviable task of commanding the Berlin defense area, surrendered to the Soviets unconditionally on this day. In a city that had been drowned in artillery for days on end, the arrival of Soviet forces meant the human rights of German civilians were about to plummet. One of the most sickening legacies left by the invasion of Berlin is the shocking deluge of sexual violence. A precise number is far from attainable, but historians estimate 40,000 to as many as 2 million German women were subjected to sexual violence. As much as the trauma of this is tragic and stomach-turning, the aftermath was just as consequential. Many German women following this violence upon their bodies would take their own lives as a result of the trauma. Though many would do the same due to the public shaming of family members or husbands despite them being forced against their will. Beyond their nearest, German women would face verbal abuse from German soldiers, have threatening letters sent to them, and be treated like traitors or victims. While most sexual violence did not result in pregnancy, many women gave birth as a result. Once again, the amount of babies resulting from sexual violence is unknown, but they were social outcasts the moment they were brought into the world, instantly regarded as Russian children. In the majority, victims of sexual violence from Russian soldiers chose abortions, and this would cost many lives. Between sexually transmitted diseases, the lack of available medicine and medical interventions not being adequately performed, these German women were among the most vulnerable in a collapsing society. Once Berlin had fallen, the Nazi regime had nothing to run on, nowhere to hide, and had been effectively ended. Just five days after the surrender of Berlin, Germany would unconditionally surrender on the 7th of May. Victory in Europe Day would be on the 8th of May, and the world could sigh a gasp of collective relief once the jubilant celebrations had died down. Though there were broader implications to the fall of this once continent-threatening hub of Nazi power, the Soviet capture of Berlin had resulted in some of the bloodiest battles in the entire conflict, with nearly 200,000 killed in total in not much longer than two weeks. Outside of this, Germany was in ruins, and as stated, the human rights violations would leave a chilling stain on the legacy of post-war Germany and the Russian forces who committed them. Berlin's capture played a significant role in shaping the post-war world to come. The city was initially divided into four zones of control, one for the UK, one for the US, one for France, and one for the Soviet Union. Berlin had been captured. The largest war the world had ever seen was over in Europe, yet a new, much colder war was about to begin. This is History on Fleet, and we'll see you next time.